Long as I'm the number one, I don't care who come after When I came from Africa, they call me Booty Stretcher Now they scream a nigga name when I say who's the man What's up, people? Welcome back to the BCMA Podcast. That's the Black Clover Martial Arts Podcast. It's your boy, Lucky from Lucky's Muay Thai. This is episode number 86. In this episode, well, it's the Sugar Show. Uh, UFC 299, Miami, we're going to talk about it. We'll also talk about the International Women's Day card that one championship put on, and it was uh, dope. But first, if you like the show, tip the like, hit the subscribe button, tell a friend, pass it along, write a comment in the comment section below. Um, if you want to stop by the gym, hit us up, www.luckysmt.com. We'll get you in for a trial class. If you like it, we'll sign you up, get you on your Muay Thai journey. Uh, if you want to try jiu-jitsu, Roberto Carrero is our jiu-jitsu instructor. He is fantastic. He has a, an amazing program. I'm a brown belt under him. I couldn't recommend him more. Uh, fantastic dude. Uh, so get in there, try it out, www.luckysmt.com, or hit us directly at Lucky's Muay Thai on Instagram, at Carrero BJJ on Instagram, and we'll get you started. Okay, at least for this first part, I had to dress the part. It was UFC 299 in Miami, and of course, it was as expected. Uh, the stars were out, sort of, um, and the fights were fantastic. So, oddly enough, for years and years and years, I've been so disappointed that we couldn't get fights, UFC fights here in Miami. Um, lo and behold, we've had a couple of events come through and they've been fantastic. The major issue is the tickets are so damn expensive. There's almost no way I'm going to waste, spend, not waste, spend that money on that when I could be spending it on vacation time with the family, etc. If we could get a little bit cheaper on the ticket prices, I'd love to go and enjoy it up close and personal. Um, I've been to see the UFC in Orlando. I've been to Strike Force. I've been to fights, all sorts of fights in all sorts of places. Um, I think the event in Miami would be great. And I think it looked like it was fantastic, uh, through the screen. But again, prices for the tickets, woof, seems like a lot for me. Anyway, let's start right here. Curtis Blades is still hanging around. Beats Almeida. To, by KO. But Curtis Blades is going to be hanging around for a long time. That man is liable to have the belt wrapped around his waist without a freaking doubt. It's longevity sometimes that provides the belt opportunity that you need. It is not necessarily going to be this thing where you beat all these opponents in a row, you get this win streak going, and the belt opportunity arises and you rise to the expectation. A lot of times that is not how it goes. In Curtis Blades' case, this is a man who will stick around and he'll be up for opportunities at the belt over and over because he's just that guy. He's durable. He might lose some, but he's going to keep being there. And I, I could bet that at some point it's going to be one of those moments where the belt opportunity arises right where, right where it needs to be. And that man wraps it around his waist. Those things happen in the UFC. They happen in fighting and durability and longevity and understanding the game and patience sometimes is befitting of some people, whereas the quick rise to stardom or the 10 fight win streak is the thing that other people uh, succeed at. So shouts to him for sticking around, man. Peter Yan beats Song Yadong. I was just waiting for the laughter to finish before because, you know. Y'all are children. Uh, Peter Yan says, let's start the revenge tour. Yeah. I mean, look, dude, everybody was so high on Peter Yan for the longest time. And he just looked like the last, those last few fights against Algermain. And, you know, just, he just doesn't Sean O'Malley, even though, yeah, whatever. I just, I, if I'm him, I'm the same way. I feel the same way. You beat a dude like like Song Yudong, and then you tell everybody I'm coming for I'm coming back for you. And if he really is about it, he'll be there because he was he was a menace before the fall off. And he I feel like he's going to be right back. I think he just had to have a a little bit of uh, soul searching, and I think it's done. Um, Gilbert Burns lost a tough one, man. Uh, Jack Della Maddalena, who is 
a fantastic striker in volume, understands angles and all those things. He just is really, really good, and he puts together punches and combinations. And, you know, unfortunately for Gilbert, I think it was even in the third round, I mean, the fight was almost to the end. And it's not to say that Gilbert would have won because Magdalena was definitely putting on, you know, several, you know, combination uh, situations where he was throwing more. But I will give it to Gilbert Burns because he defended a lot, a lot, a lot of strikes with his footwork, with his arms. He was doing really well. He got caught with a jab early. And I thought to myself, oh, they were preparing for this because they felt like he is susceptible for that. And he was, right? He got caught with it early and it, and he gets hit with it squarely. That's his problem with the jab. It's not that he gets popped with it, popped with it. It's that he gets hit with the jab the way some people get hit with crosses. It just has to be with, it, it literally has to do with his positioning and, and how he steps in when he goes to strike. I mean, that's a, not an easy thing to fix, but you can definitely work to fix it. What they did, what he did do was avoid that a lot later and throughout the fight. He did stay away from that. His footwork was great. I don't know if he got tired towards the end. I don't know if it was just Madalena's pressure. Madalena did start turning up the, turning it up. I mean, there was a point where Gilbert Burns intercepted Madalena coming in and hit him with an elbow. Like, he was really, really in this fight. He was doing great things. But Madalena's just a beast. And he's out here putting together strikes in combination. And I think when you're that kind of striker and you understand what's happening, you can beat a lot of people up just based on how you position yourself and your footwork and then always striking with three or four or five strikes and putting together body with head and legs. And like, it, it just works really well if you understand how to do it and put it together. So shout out to Madalena for, you know, putting away Gilbert Burns, who was actually having a pretty good um, fight offensively and defensively, but Madalena just turned it up and that was it. Holy shit. Kevin Holland and MVP. Um, Kevin Holland reminds me of where uh, Masvidal was in his career a little bit. I feel like Kevin Holland doesn't realize that he can really beat all these dudes. Kevin Holland is fucking good. He could have beat MVP as well. When he pressed him up against the cage and took him down and beat him up, he had success. When he pressed him up against the cage, he had success. I'm not saying it was easy. I'm not saying that MVP wasn't strong as hell. I'm just saying, like, we all know that your road to victory here is to stay out of the way as best you can of those blitzes where he jumps in or flies in or blitzes in. Leg kick the shit out of him when he's when he's coming in, which you did a couple of times. And then really just put pressure on him against the game. It was hard to cut him off, I know, but... Damn, he was doing such a good job, um, Kevin Holland, of pressing him to the point where he had to get him against the cage, but he just couldn't keep him there. And I'm not certain about his wrestling, but I know his jiu-jitsu was good. So I don't know why uh, he didn't make a better, do a better job of keeping that pressure against the cage. I just, I don't really know. But, um MVP did a great job, man. He would do those flying and leaping right hands. He was playing a lot of the the point game, which is fantastic. But you saw where Kevin Holland was was successful at. Kick those legs out from underneath him and press his ass against the cage. Take him down. Make him have to work to get back up. Those were the things that were successful. What was not successful was staying out of range and really trying to um, beat him at his game. And you're, if you're not faster than him and he's starting to land some of these overhand rights that are landing behind the ear and these things, like you have got to stay face forward squarely as much as possible. And I don't know, man, kick those legs out. Like, I don't know what happened there at that point. And I know Kevin Holland got severely, uh, severely, he got super frustrated. And then he danced a little at the end too. Like, you know, why don't you engage? But ultimately, Kevin Holland might have one of those moments in his in his career where he's just like, what am I doing? I know I'm going to beat the, I can beat these guys. And then he might come out, as Masvidal did, and really go on a tear. Um, I foresee this. This is the future for Kevin Holland. Believe it. MVP, I don't know. 
you know, obviously everybody that knows knows we don't want to see him versus Steven Thompson. It might turn out to be lame. So let's not do that. Uh, where does he go? MVP from here? I have no idea. Um, he always was going to want it to be a show because that's where he comes from. The UFC claims they don't like that. All right, man. Y'all are in the entertainment business. You, How can you say you don't like entertainment? Like, this is that bullshit. You can't wear your own. Yo, Sean O'Malley, you can't wear your own. It's so stupid. Like, you can't have your own personality, but we're going to give, we're going to push those people that create their own personality and, like, their own character. It's craziness. Anyway, MVP, keep dancing, man. Do your thing. I hope you uh, do really well and, you know, maybe get a title shot at some point. I don't know. But Kevin Holland, man, you got this, bro. Get back on the horse. Don't let these fools just be beating you. I know you love to talk to them. Take them down, beat them up, submit them. You're a Travis Luter, bro. Black belt? Are you serious? Man, please choke some of these people. <sighs> Not disappointed, but just like, I'm a little disappointed that there wasn't a little more engagement, you know, at moments where there could have been. Um, let's get to it. Dustin Poirier KOs Benoit Saint-Denis. And let's talk about what Dustin Poirier does and who Dustin Poirier is. I've been a fan since way back when the freaking, they did a documentary back when none of y'all were watching any of this MMA stuff. Um, and he was in it. And the truth of the matter is this dude is just a very, very talented and skilled fighter. This man understands everything that needs to be understood <laughs> about what it takes to win a fight. Um, and it depends on what opponents there, obviously. And we can talk about these guillotines all you want, but let's just go back to the Khabib fight. We know how it went, but we know how it was going at one moment. So if you want to get on him about jumping these guillotines, I'm with him, man. Jump them all you want. In fact, the punches that came that knocked Benoit, out, Benoit Saint-Denis out came after the jump, after a failed jump guillotine attempt, like he might be jumping these things, but they are useful to him. Mo in most cases, I don't care if he jumps them because normally a lot of times he has these dudes next man. And this is like, for whatever reason, they keep ending up there. So for whatever reason, I'm going to keep trying to snatch that neck and I get it. Um, but to be honest, he's just very good defensively. He was able to block a lot of things on his arms. He was able to, you know, then disperse punches throughout the combinations that Benoit Saint-Denis was throwing. So if Benoit Saint-Denis is throwing body, body, head, head, uppercut, whatever, it's somewhere in there, Dustin Poirier was able to land a little clipping hook or something to that effect in that regard. Eventually those things add up. And Benoit Saint-Denis is an absolute beast, but... Dustin Poirier has a couple of things going for him. Number one, experience. Number two, this man is tough as nails. He will weather the storm. He is not going to just roll over and fall apart. Like, that's just not him. So you, you're you going to have to be able to bang like that throughout the entire um, fight. Like, if you can't do it from the start to the finish, you're probably not going to beat him. Uh, 